Well, we spoke today uh, to the Shadow Immigration Minister, uh, Stephen Kinnock, uh, who was on the programme today. I started by asking him if he backed the strikes. What we need to do is keep focused on the government because it is the government's job to make these talks work. It's actually in the contract between train operators and the government that industrial action uh, should only take place at the direction of the government and the decisions the operators make should be at the direction of the Secretary of State for Transport. But Boris Johnson and Grant Shapps have been completely absent from these talks and from this process, and that's because they want these strikes to happen. So I think our job as Labour MPs, as the Parliamentary Labour Party, is to stay focused on the government, to make it clear that it's the government's job to get people round the table. And that, I think, has to be the singular focus of what we're saying and doing in Parliament. It's, it's pretty clear um, that that's the kind of line from Labour. I guess what I'm still struggling to understand is Labour's actual position on the strikes. I'll rephrase it. If you are an RMT member, would you be voting for action? Yes, I would be, because I think that um, the, there is the right to strike and it's really important that workforces have that right to strike. We believe that uh, rail workers, health workers, people working in every industry uh, that has done so much as well to keep our economy going through the pandemic have the right to strike and to fight for a better deal. And what was really incredible today was to learn that the government is looking to lift the cap on bankers' bonuses. So whilst they're preaching uh, to those who've kept our economy going through the pandemic that they have to exercise wage restraint, they are telling the bankers uh, that it's all right to just carry on raking it in. It, it's breathtaking hypocrisy. And I think what we really saw today is where the government's priorities lie. Um, we believe in... Uh, working people getting a good deal in terms of pay, terms and conditions. Okay. A strike is a last resort for getting that, but sometimes that's what you have to do. Well, I mean, listening to you, it sounds like you, you do agree with, uh, you know, their right to strike. You know, that you're pro-worker, that if you're an RMT uh, member, you would vote to strike, that people deserve to, you know, get paid uh, at the level that they should be. Um, do you think that Keir Starmer's misjudged it a bit then? Because actually, if you look at the polling, you know, there is more support for the strikes than perhaps some would expect. 37% support them, according to YouGov. Do you think he's misjudged the public mood? I think he's got it absolutely right, actually, because he has said very clearly that his job and the job of Labour MPs and the Parliamentary Party is to keep the focus on the government. Oh, come on, the though. He hasn't... He hasn't has he's been very failed. He's been very careful uh, not to back the strikes, to tell Labour MPs that they shouldn't be joining picket lines and to effectively, you know, uh, move away from the debate. We need to keep our fire on the Conservative government and the way in which they have failed. Uh, to get these strikes off the, the get the talks off the ground to okay. stop these strikes from happening, and the reason is because they want the strikes to happen. Keir, I think, has called that out really effectively, and I think the way he's done that has really cut through with the British people. Okay, um, so you're saying that you want the government to get involved, to get around the negotiating table. So what would Labour do then? Uh, the RMT wants to see a pay rise of seven percent to. Uh, effectively match uh, inflation last year where, when they were being negotiated. Um, would you agree to a 7% pay rise? It's not our job as Labour MPs to tell the RMT what is a deal that they would accept. I'm, I'm, we not know asking that... you to I'm asking, if you were in government, you are asking the government to get involved. If you were in government, would you accept a 7% pay rise? It's also not the job of government to publicly say what the outcome of negotiations should be. Those negotiations have to take place around a, a table where there's trust between all of the uh, key parties. Are you happy with a 7% pay rise, though? Do you think that's in the right ballpark? Well, uh, the RMT has to be very clear on what its bottom line is uh, and to be able to take a deal back to its workforce that can be approved. And it's for the workforce to know. They are the hard-working uh, people in our rail industry that have kept our economy going through the pandemic. You can't they say know whether or not they deserve a They know better than, than we do uh, what is the best deal for them and what works for them. OK. Um, teaching unions are also uh, balloting uh, for strike action. We've heard from the unions there that they want, in their words, an inflation-busting pay rise, 11.7%. Currently, the offer is 3%. Would you agree to an 11.7% rise for teachers? What we've seen is people taking a real-terms pay cut, and inflation, of course, plays a role in that. But what I would first of all say is 
should those bankers be having their, the cap lifted let's, on let's their bonus? Let's not talk about that. Let let, a bit should the people yeah. running Wait, Network let, Rail, who are making over half a million pounds a year, let's have some levelling the... up in the salaries. Let's have some levelling up and some justice in the way in so which our economy works. So what does justice look like? We know that you would like to see the cap on bankers' bonuses. We know that you think that the Chief Executive of Network Rail is paid too much. 11.7% for teachers, is that fair? I think we have to have a deal for the teaching unions to take back to their members that they would find acceptable. Specifically on the public sector, would you like to see uh, pay rises for the public sector matching inflation? I want to see the public se sector getting a fair deal, and that is something they have not had for many, many years. We've had 12 years of Tory austerity, 12 years of public sector pay freezes. And that has led us to a situation where the workforce is demotivated, demoralised. They pulled out all the stops to get our country through the pandemic and they deserve some justice and they deserve some fair play. And I think that that's not that much to ask. So the government has to be ready to come forward with a policy on pay that is going to work for public sector workers, but they also need so to have Labour's policies policy? to grow our economy. What's Labour's policy on pay then? Well, the, we're not in government, so we don't... We, we need to see the government engaging with the public sector, but we've been clear that our public sector pay freezes were not the right way to go. And we've been clear all the way through that public, the public sector pay should be in line with inflation. Now, of course, we're seeing inflation uh, going through the roof. Uh, and so we are going to have to have a compromise, which is based on giving people the fairest possible deal that we can get in difficult economic circumstances. But we also need to see the government taking action to get inflation down. That means getting a much better deal in terms of trading with the European Union than we currently have because the price of imports are going through the roof. It means taking VAT off energy bills. It means growing the economy, investing in produ productive sectors like wind farms and uh, insulating people's homes so that you actually create good jobs driving up productivity. That's the only way to really deal with inflation in the long term and have much more sustainable growth. So the government has to do these two things, a fair deal for our workers combined with pro-growth and pro-sustainability policies.